so session 2 in this session we will be discussing about the seven criteria based on which the marks are given by the nac inspection team as well as the nac office team which is going to verify the quantitative data that we provide so these seven criteria decide the marks that we score so the higher you score the better is your grade and the higher you can score only if your answers are perfect and good along with the supporting documents so what are the seven criteria what are these key indicators and what is this l and q n that is qualitative and quantitative metrics so that we are going to have a detailed study in this session so continuing this is the yeah this is the extended profile of an institution so before filling up this is a part of your ssr so in this extended profile these are the quantitative data that we have to provide so the first question and uh, when we say 1.1 it means criteria number 1 as you can see the next two question is 2.1 criteria number 2 under which you have uh, three data that is to be given and under criteria number 3 you have two data and criteria number 4 you have uh, again three more data that is to be given these are the data that you have to provide under this extended profile of an institution so the first one you have to provide the number of courses offered by the institution across all the programs during the last 5 years so as uh, we discussed during the session 1 here they are asking you the number of courses which roughly translating means the number of subjects that have been offered by the institution across all the programs now uh, only those institutions who have the academic autonomy who have the complete freedom to revise to edit update or change their curriculum or syllabus only those institutions have full freedom and they can alter their courses and whenever there is a slight change also they consider that as a new course as a revised course, and the numbers will get altered when they are entering the data whereas in the case of institutions which are offering the programs in which the syllabus is being strictly laid down as per the laid down guidelines of the statutory councils like say for example in the case of medical programs dental programs where the regulatory authority the medical council of india or the dental council of india are very specific upon the curriculum and syllabus you know you can't do much about the courses that you offer as a part of the curriculum so there will not there cannot be much change and even if there is any change it has to be with the corresponding approval from that regulatory authority so in question number 1.1 we will be entering the number of courses offered by the institution say for example if it's an arts college you have a ba english ba tamil ba history uh, ba hindi bcom bsc so many programs and under each program for example in the case of bsc mathematics the student the number of uh, subjects that a student studies that's what we mean by the number of courses so like this for each program you have to identify the courses and then remove the common courses they cannot be a repetition of the course like say for example mathematics can be a subject which is studied both by bsc math student and bsc physics student but the if once the course title and the course code are same then it cannot be counted two times and uh,
for an MBA program. Reena Shia Madam is asking for an MBA program affiliated to a university. Here again, once you are affiliated, then you can't do anything about the courses that is being offered as a part of the curriculum. So your course would purely be determined. The number of courses you offer, the syllabus would be purely determined by the affiliating university. So once you are an affiliated institution, not much can be done for point number one point one. You have to enter the actual data as prescribed by the university. Moving on to number two, number of year wise uh, students during the last five years. So here one common doubt that may arise is, sir, how to enter the years, year one, year two, year three, year four and year five, whether I have to come in chronological order or whether I have to enter the data backwards. If you are having doubts like that, what we strongly recommend is in the year column, you very specific, you give very specific answers like 2021, 20, 20, 29, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, data starting in chronological order while some departments may go in reverse chronological order in order in order to avoid this confusion if you can specify the year the academic year explicitly then this confusion can be sorted out then so 2.1 is completed 2.2 now the reason why we say that uh, the department should also be involved in this is that there may be some cases because this data which you provide can also be collected from the office, from the central office or the admission office or the head of the institution. He will also be having this data. But the primary reason why we are saying that the, this data should also be cross verified with the department. Here, uh, Professor Arjit Gangopadhyay is asking kindly repeat the difference again between course and the program. Sir, let me put it very simply course means the subject. Whereas program means the degree. So MBA is a program, MTech is a program, MSc is a program. Whereas uh, the mathematics course that you study under, the subject that you study under that uh, MSc Max course is a subject. So I think that clears your doubt. And coming back to the uh, 2.1, sorry. Uh, yeah, coming back to 2.1, as I was saying, the reason why we are asking to get this data from the department also is that so that there is no contrary data between the department and the central office and the head of the institution who is going to provide this data to NAC. Now, this question may arise as to how can there be a controversy or how can there be a change in the number of students? Well, there can be, there have, we have seen instances because uh, I was an assessor for NBA. Uh, I have worked as a, an assistant director in the National Board of Accreditation under the All India Council for Technical Education. As an assistant director, I have convened so many number of NBA visits and I have gone through many uh, NBA and NAC uh, profiles wherein there is, there can, there have been instances wherein there has been discrepancies between the data given by the department and the center office. Like say, for example, in a particular department in a course, a student would have taken TC and would have left the institution and at the time of leaving the institution midway of his program before completing the program you say for example if it's a four years program uh, before the completion in the seventh semester itself he would have left the institution so as he is leaving the institution uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Yeah, Dr. Johnson is saying questions at the end. Yes, please, definitely. I'll start answering the questions at the end. Definitely. So if the student leaves uh, leaves at uh, the seventh semester itself, at in one institution, for example, what happened was a student has taken the TC. While taking the TC, obviously, he, he should have got the 
dues, no dues cleared from the department. So when he got the no dues cleared from the department, his HOD, head of the department, was on vacation at that time. And the no dues certificate was signed by the next person in charge of the department. Unfortunately, this data was not updated. to the head of the uh, to, uh, to the uh, uh, head of the department when he joined back to duty so when they given when they had given the data the data was not tallying that is the reason why we say that the data should be obtained from the department also for students and verified with the head of the institution with the centralized data collection office and 2.2 says number of seats earmarked for reserve category this would be as per rules uh, the departments don't have any say in that. Only thing is that the departments should also be knowing the split up in which the seats under their department are being earmarked to the students under the various categories. And 2.3 says number of outgoing final year students during the last five years. So here one doubt they are claiming is that is it the total students or passed out students? Uh, so as it very clearly says final year students so if i say in this year uh, 2019 20 if i'm entering the data in 1920 if it is a mba course number of students in the second year alone and when i enter the in the year column when i enter 18 19 during that academic year number of students in the second final year that is the second year of the mba program alone only that should be entered And the third criterion is the academic criterion in which the questions asked are the number of full time teachers year wise during the last five years. And below that, you have the number of sanctioned posts year wise during the last five years. Now, this is given to verify whether you have got all the sanctioned, whether there's all the sanctioned posts in your institutions have been filled up or whether there are any shortage of faculty in your department. So this question, the data to this question will be answering that criteria. And in the fourth criteria regarding the institution, they are asking total number of classrooms with seminar halls, total expenditure excluding the salary year wise during the last five years and also the total number of computers available in your institution. So you have to enter the data for that. And these are the data that are required under the extended profile of the institution. So once this is done, we are moving on to the SSR. So as we said during the end of the first session, after the acceptance of the Institutional Information on Quality Assurance, IAQA. NAC will be sending an email saying that your IAQA has been approved and you are ready to fill up the self-study report. So as I told you, this self-study report has to be completed and uploaded in the portal of the NAC website within 45 days. So the SSR, it is suggested that the institutions first start preparing the SSR and once they are quite confident that they have got the SSR in a presentable format and then they can apply for the IAQA. So once you submit the SSR, the SSR will then be subjected to further process And uh, NAC says that those institutions who fail to submit the SSR within 45 days will have to apply fresh starting from the IAQA and its fees. As I told you earlier during the first session itself, it is system automated. So please ensure that you submit it within those 45 days. However, NAC says that uh, although the extension for submission of this uh, 45 days time for SSR is not possible if the request is uh, raised with the issues management system with proper reason and supporting proof.
only in case of natural calamities or floods or technical problems, then they say that they can give you an additional 15 days. And whatever be the case, and in some cases, if the institution says that they are not going to submit the SSR also, even, uh, even in that case, the fees that you already paid, the 25,000 rupees which you paid for the IAQA will not be refunded because that 25,000 rupees was purely for the IAQA processing. So as we start preparing the SSR, the seven criteria we have to know which form the basis for the assessment and accreditation of the institution. So the seven criteria are curricular aspects, teaching, learning and evaluation, research, innovations and extension, infrastructure, student support, governance, relationship and institutional values and best practices. So we are going to see about each and every criteria in the SSR. So briefing the entire assessment process, NAC says that the assessment process will be carried out in three stages, three main components. One is the preparation of this self-study report, which also includes a student satisfaction survey and the pre, uh, sorry, three components are the self-study report, the student satisfaction survey and the peer team, that is the inspection team report. And the SSR has a total of 115 metrics for universities, for autonomous colleges it is 107 and for affiliated institutions it is 93 for UG and 96 for PG. And uh, these come under the seven criteria. Now let us understand what are these criteria and what are these metrics. Criteria is nothing but the headings or the subheadings of the various uh, aspects under accreditation. So under these seven headings come these metrics. Metrics are nothing but questions for which we are supposed to, uh, for which the institution is supposed to give the answer. So metrics means questions. Say as teachers, let us put it this way. The seven criteria are the seven units, unit one, unit or lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five, lesson six and lesson seven. And the metrics are the questions that will be asked under each lesson. And these metrics are, or these questions are of two types. One is qualitative, the other one is quantitative metrics. So that's what we have, uh, if you had noticed at the beginning of the slide, I said QN and QN. QL stands for qualitative, whereas QN stands for quantitative. So wherever you are giving quantitative answers, it, consider, it consists only of numbers and these numbers would be verified by the back end team of NAC, by the back office team of NAC, that is the data validation and verification committee. Uh, while the qualitative metrics are descriptive answers. And these qualitative metrics are the ones that would be verified by the peer team. Of course, the peer team has, will also verify the quantitative metrics also. We are not saying that they are not going to verify quantitative, but more importantly, quantitative will definitely be verified by the data validation and verification committee, <clears throat> the DVV. Only on satisfactory report from the DVV, the third stage, that is, the peer team visit will happen. So in the next slide, we are going to see the distribution of the key indicators and the metrics. So as we saw during our session one presentation, the institution can fall under any of these three categories, whether you are a university or an autonomous college or an affiliated college. The criteria remain the same, the seven criteria teaching, learning process, governance, leadership, student support and progression infrastructure. So the seven criteria are the same. <clears throat> the key indicators, that is the subheadings. So criteria are the headings, key indicators are the subheadings. There would be under the seven criteria, you will be having 34 subheadings and under these subheadings, again, you will be answering qualitative answers based on qualitative metrics and 
quantitative metrics. So if you are at university, totally you will be giving 115 answers out of which 79 would be purely data and 36 would be descriptive. As autonomous colleges, out of the total 107 questions, 72 would be purely data and 35 would be descriptive. And as affiliated colleges for UG, total is 93 out of which 58 is data and 35 is descriptive. And for a PG college, 96 is the total questions that are to be answered out of which 60 are quantitative and 36 are qualitative. So entering into criterion one, what are the various key indicators under criterion one and under these three key indicators, what are the various qualitative and quantitative questions that are to be answered? So under the main heading criterion one, the subheadings that we have are curriculum design and development, curriculum planning and implementation, academic flexibility, curriculum enrichment and feedback system. So as we have indicated over there by the letters U and A, curriculum design and development is applicable only for universities, whereas curriculum planning and application and implementation are applicable for affiliated colleges because as affiliated colleges, we, have, we don't have any saying. As far as the curriculum is concerned, we simply follow the curriculum as given by the affiliating university. So the example that we are taking is for an UG college. A typical example we'll take in which under criterion one. So as you can see the heading, we have taken the latest. We have taken the latest revised accreditation framework. So for UG colleges, under the main heading, curricular aspects, and within bracket, the 100 given is the total number of marks allotted for that criteria. So for criteria only, it is 100 marks. And out of which, for the subheading, key indicator 1.1, curricular planning and implementation, it carries 20 marks. So here, where it is curricular planning and implementation because It is an affiliate. The example that we have taken is an affiliated institution. So, and out of these 20 marks, it is divided into first question carries 10 marks. That is 1.1.1. Question number 1.1.1. Here we don't say question, we use the word metric. Let us understand that metric is the equivalent of question. So, metric number 1.1.1. So the first one, 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, what we mean is the first one indicates the main heading, that is criterion one. And the second one indicates the key indicator, that is curricular planning and implementation. And the last one, the number, the last number one indicates the question number. So the question that is asked is, the institution ensures effective curriculum delivery through a well-planned and documented process and here as it is given below the metric number it is a qualitative metric which means you are supposed to give a descriptive answer and they are asked so a descriptive answer means you are going to give how effectively you are delivering the curriculum by means of the traditional chalk and talk method about webinars about the industrial visits that you may take the children or take the students or the project works, the seminars that you arrange, the conferences that you arrange. So all these are given in a descriptive method and they are also asking you to upload any additional information that you may have. For example, uh, in the case of uh, say best project works done or in the case of e-content for effective curriculum delivery, which you have done, you can upload the files. Or in case if the file is too large to be uploaded, in that case, you can give the link for additional information. It is either of those. You can either upload the file directly 
or you can give the link for the additional information now in all the questions there is there uh, this option will be asked whether you are going to upload the actual data or whether you are going to give the link for the additional information so here one important thing that is to be noted is when you are giving the link for the additional information say for example i say the link is for e content then once the link is being clicked by nac in your ssr as you are uploading the file as you are uh, filling up the document online you have typed the link once the link is being clicked it should take directly to the e content on your website it should not land on the home page of the website because the dvv data validation and verification committee they cannot search our website and find out which data is given where that is a, that is not possible for them that is the reason why they say give the direct link so that once i click on e content then inside my website wherever the e content has been uploaded the link should directly take me over there that uh, that is for metric number 1.1.1 next is metric number 1.1.2 the institution adheres to the academic calendar including the content of the examinations that is internal examinations continuous assessment processes so here again it is a descriptive answer and if you have any additional information in the form of file uploading for example the timetable which you have followed the entire academic calendar in addition to this description most of the institutions uh, most of the institutions issue an academic calendar to the students at the beginning of every year saying when is the exams expected to happen and uh, when are the industrial visits expected to happen what is the tentative time of the first internal examination second internal test third internal test what is the tentative uh, starting and ending date of the model examination what is the tentative scheduling of the uh, seminars workshops or and even conferences that are being arranged in arranged department wise for every program so when we say add, upload additional information you can either upload the academic pdf format of the academic calendar directly or you can give the link as said earlier only thing is that once we click the link uh then it should go directly to the academic calendar and not to the home page of the website so once again let me specify so here uh as uh professor arjit gangopadhyay is saying he is asking us to cite one or two examples of what point we should cover that is definitely being done so we have taken i mean uh, your request has been considered and it will definitely be answered so as we said in the qualitative metric number 1.1.2 when we say the link then it means the link which will land you directly on the academic calendar in your website the next metric the next metric is a quantitative metric now this is the first time first two were descriptive whereas this one is quantitative it says that teachers of the institution do they participate in the following activities related to curriculum development assessment of the affiliating university and are represented on the following academic bodies now this example which we have taken is for an affiliated institution so say for example you are affiliated to vishweswaraya technological university or you are affiliated to madras university or uh, anna university or university of pune so in here the quantitative answer what we mean yes in the uh, four bodies which thing is the academic council or the board of studies of the affiliating university now my answer for one if i am say, saying yes my people are there in the academic council means it means only if as a you know what the answer i am giving is for an affiliated college so the answer i can say that my staff are there in the academic council or bos of the affiliating university for example if my institution is affiliated to btu vishweswaraya then only if any of my staff member 
is there in that board of studies or their academic council my answer would be yes for point number 1 but in case if they are in the academic council or board of studies of some other university which has got uh, nothing to do with my institution then i cannot include their names in point number 1 so while you are giving the quantitative metrics please ensure that the and the number that you give is specific and relevant with the supporting document so if i say that yes people are there in the academic council and board of studies then i have to also have the letter given by that affiliated university as a, to the corresponding staff member appointing them as a member of the bos or the ac academic council and it is also they are also asking whether staffs are setting question papers and whether they are involved in the design and de uh, development of curriculum for add on programs and assessment process whether they are being called for paper evaluation so when once we say that this we say for example out of the 100 staff 70 staff if i say as a quantitative number 70 staffs are involved in assessment uh, paper evaluation means then i need to have 70 letters inviting these 70 different faculties for the paper evaluation so this is what we say quantitative metrics any number that you specify here should be supported by the corresponding document so let me just repeat for in the case of academic council and board of studies the letter issued by that university appointing the staff member number 2 setting of question papers again the corresponding staff member would have uh, got a letter or an email so that would be the supporting document for that same thing applies to point numbers 3 and 4 and in fact in the case of uh, point number 2 setting of question papers and point number 4 the staff would also have got remuneration from the corresponding university for setting up the for setting the question paper and also for evaluation of answer sheets uh, the money would have been given either in the form of check or in the tra online uh, transfer so a copy of the passbook showing that online transfer would also be appreciated and uh, that is the data required and here as you can see the data template so uh, if you remember in the session 1 we say we had given a list of documents which had to be downloaded from the nac website so if, if you are in that list of document itself we have indicated that you have to download these templates so in those templates you have to enter this enter these numbers so these templates the numbers they will be asking you the number of teachers and also the name of the body that is the affiliated university and then the total number of teachers at that point of time so this completes uh, this metric 1.1.3 which is a quantitative metric and moving on to the next one so key indicator number 1.2 so now we have completed the first subheading under main heading criterion 1 the key indicator 1.1 is completed now we have come to key indicator 1.2 which is about academic flexibility so first answer is yes uh, one of the uh, they are asking whether we can consider practical or oral assessment yes definitely if you have been an uh, gone as an external examiner for uh, conducting practical examinations yes it also comes under evaluation only it can definitely be considered now coming to metric number 1.2.1 uh, percentage of programs in which choice based credit system cbcs or elective course system has been implemented so here they are asking you again it's a quantitative matrix you have to enter the exact number so they are asking you the number of programs in which the uh, this system is being implemented so out of the various programs that you offer say for example if i am a university and i am offering and i am having uh, two or three institutions uh, say for example i am having a medical college and also an engineering college then it is possible that in engineering college i can uh, employ cbca system whereas there may be a course sorry a program in which i cannot have any electives in such cases the total number of programs would be in the formula as you can see the number of programs in which the cbcs is implemented divided by the total number of programs offered as i told you in the example if i am offering two programs out of which in only one there is cbcs or elective then 
the formula will be 1 by 2, that is 50% of the courses. Now, please remember it is either or, either CBCS or elective. And here you have to upload the uh, minutes of the relevant academic council and board of studies meetings. Or if you are an affiliated college, the syllabus book would be fine. And if you are a university, the academic council and board of studies meeting. Now here, one uh, question that may arise is that the academic council or the board of management, board of studies, these files are sensitive files and we can't uh, leave it in the open in our uh, university website. So in that case, what we do is we upload that document with a password so that once you submit the SSR and the NAC people while verifying the document, if they click on the link, it will go directly to the minutes of the academic council, but it will ask for the password, which the NAC people, which we will be sharing, the institution will be sharing with the NAC people so that the NAC can enter that password and open the document, in which case only the NAC has access to sensitive materials. So that is one thing that we can use where sensitive data or sensitive documents which cannot be uploaded on the website can be password protected. So that completes 1.2.1. Coming to the next metric, 1.2.2. A number of add-on certificate programs. So nowadays, most of the institutions are offering additional programs. In addition to the curriculum, they are going outside their syllabus and uh, they are engaging outside uh, agencies to offer certificate programs or they are collaborating with outside agencies. So outside agencies may be private agencies or uh, even government agencies. For example, ICT Academy is there with which uh, we can uh, enter into MOUs <clears throat> and uh, even private bodies which uh, private professional societies also are there with which we can enter into an MOU and we can offer add-on programs. So they are asking you how many programs have been given in the last five years and again the data template and uh, towards the end of this session we'll, I'll also show the all these data templates uh, they have already downloaded I'll also show you a sample of these data templates. Is IGNO one question that is being asked is, is IGNO center? No, IGNO Center cannot be because the, those programs that not, does not come under this institution. So the next question is 1.2.3, which is again quantitative, which means we have to enter data. So average percentage of students enrolled in these certificate courses as against the total number of students. So here, <clears throat> once again, they, they want to know whether uh, how much percentage of students are taking up these additional courses here uh, it is not necessary that all the students should be going should be taking up all the certificate courses it is not so so out of say for example in a class of uh, uh, 50 students uh, some 30 students may be under may have taken up certificate course number one whereas another the remaining 20 uh, another 25 students would have taken uh, certificate number two so only thing is what we have to ensure is so how many students have undergone at least how many uh, one training program so that says the total number of students uh, which comes in the numerator which obviously means that if one student has undergone three certificate programs it is still counted as only one student and you can't count it as three and then once you enter this data for the five years they take up the average for this and uh, the file that is to be uploaded is details of the students enrolled in subjects. So here you have to give the data of the students, specifically the register number of the student and the name of the student who has undergone this program. So here you will be uploading. In the data template which NAC has provided. Here, uh, one more query that we are uh, getting is they want us to uh, elaborate on the type of certificate course. So it is called a certificate course only if there are a minimum of 30, 30 contact hours. If it is less than 30 contact hours, then it shall not be considered. Again, this I am telling you now, 
this is very clearly given once we are going to the third session once we are considering the data verification and validation there this is very clearly specified now coming on to the next metric 1.3.1 it is a qualitative ql so institution integrates cross cutting issues relevant to professional ethics gender human values it is descriptive and here the information the supporting document which you can upload is the list and description of courses so if you are an affiliated college then a syllabus book would be fine so a syllabus and once they click on the link it should directly land on that page of the syllabus book on that page of the pdf document in which the course related to professional ethics is printed the next question is average percentage of courses that include experiential learning through project work it is again quantitative which means you have to specify which means you have to specify the number of courses and uh, here you have to the supporting document that has to be entered in the data template is the name of the course say for example in the case of engineering uh, if it is a final in final engineering if it is a project that he is doing then it is it comes under this it, it will be counted as one course and again the formula is same and uh, please remember that it is the course like say for example i mean when we say course it is the subject now say for example if a subject includes an in the, an uh, a mini project which is considered towards assessment of the subject then it will be counted as a course including experiential learning now say for example in the case of engineering if in the second year or third year or in the case of a science say bsc or mm bsc max or bsc physics in the second year we under if he does some mini project which carries some weightage we are specified in the curriculum then it me that course would be counted here and the supporting documents that you have to enter is as i said the program and the curriculum the syllabus which says that yes mini project is a part of this course and if you are an affiliated institution then the minutes of the board the point number 2 is not applicable to you and uh, if you are a university a private university then point number 2 would be applicable and the fourth subheading is the feedback system which we are following whether the institution takes feedback from the students teachers employers and alumni and nowadays most of the institutions take this feedback online and uh, they have a separate uh, erp a separate software for analyzing this feedback so we have to enter the link for this feedback and as you can see here in the five, it's a quantitative metric so once you say that yes we take feedback from the student teachers employees of all the four categories then you have to give the supporting dog you have to uh, give the feedback report taken from the student teacher employers and alumni now here one thing we have to verify we have to understand is that say for example the data validation verification committee how they can cross check the data that we have given now remember here in this 1.4.1 if my answer to subheading number 4 feedback from the alumni is yes if you remember when we are entering the student data we gave the number of students in every year which means my alumni data is also available with the data validation verification committee same way the students data is available with them and they may very specifically ask send me the feedback report submitted by this and the student in case if it is non confidential in many institutions we take the feedback from the students without asking their names then in that case it is fine you can give, give the answer to the verification validation dv committee that no we don't take the names of the students whereas if you if, we, if our feedback report specifies the specifies the name of the student who has given it. uh here vasuki madam is asking is there a common feedback no there is no hard and fast rules regarding the format of the feedback the format of the feedback is left to the individual institution so as i told you if your for, if your feedback includes the name of the student then the dvv committee can very well 
ask for the feedback report submitted by a specific student so in the file description as you can see they are also asking you for the action taken report of the institution on the feedback report like say for example the student may have given a feedback saying that they want to include some they want to remove some topic which is obsolescence which is in obsolescence for example uh, in the case of computer programming if you are having some programming language which is no more in use and your alumni has given a feedback saying that sir you can remove this language from the syllabus and you can include the latest language which is now uh, sought after by the companies then on analyzing that feedback the concerned department will propose removing the obsolescent language from their syllabus and including the new programming language so this would be given to the board of studies which would approve consider the merits and demerits and if the merits are good they would approve it which will again approved by the academic council in case of universities and in case of affiliated bodies the syndicate so if you are a university and you have taken some measure regarding that you need to su submit that document also so this carries a weightage of 10 marks and the remaining 10 marks is given to the next question that is the feedback process uh, mr arjit gangopadhyay is asking could this be scanned copies definitely it can be scanned copies and uh, as i told you nowadays uh, not many are uh, taking hand copies everything has gone online but if you still follow that uh, uh, hard copy you can very well scan that <laughs> And the next question is uh, the feedback process of the institution. Maybe what are the feed? Uh, what are you doing with that feedback? Whether you are not at all collecting the feedback, and if you are just collecting the feedback, sir, but we are not doing anything, or if you are collecting it, analyzing it, and taking action on that, and, and whether you have to put this on your website. So depending on that, you will be answering either A, B, C, D, or E. And uh, now I have one more query saying that uh, uh, Sri Lata is asking, what is the year stick? Oh, yardstick. <laughs> okay. What is the yardstick for analyzing? Well, the yardstick is that whether you have considered their ideas and whichever is implementable and productive ideas, whether that has been implemented. That is the yardstick because they may be coming up with uh, some very good ideas which would be really useful and whether the institution has been taking that considerably. And uh, in and in cases where uh, not much can be done about the feedback, then of course we have analyzed that, and you will close it saying that uh, no no action need to be taken on this feedback. Like that, you can close this. That is the yardstick. So uh, if your answer is A for this question, saying that yes, we have collected, analyzed, and action taken, and feedback is also available on our website, then that link should be given. The URL for that link should be given in this SSR so that once the committee clicks on this link, it should take them directly to that page on our website. And now that completes criteria number one, that is heading number one. Smita Patil Madam is asking, it is, is it compulsory to take feedback from every student? Of course it is compulsory and the more number of students you have, it is better. Whereas if you say that, you know, out of the say 50 students in my class, I have the feedback uh, from only 20 students means then uh, it paints a poor picture about your uh, feedback system. So the more number of students you have, the better. And I have one more question from here, which says that uh, Mr. Kulkarni is asking, feedback from the em employers include what? Well, my, the employers will give you feedback about the persons whom they have employed. How was the attitude of the persons? How are they working? Uh, based on their attitude, should some improvement be given on the say on the ethical part, on the time management part, or the employers can also su suggest some important topics that can be included in the curriculum and syllabus. And uh, Dr. Rina Shyam is asking, how many batches of alumni? As the NAC indicates, it is always the last five years. You need to have the last five years data with you. And coming to criterion two. So in this criterion two, under the main heading, 
the subheadings given are student in, uh, in the teaching learning process the uh, subheadings given are student enrollment student diversity tlp teachers profile and quality the evaluation process and how the students are uh, performing in that and the triple student satisfaction survey so the first question under this subheading 2.1 is average enrollment percentage so how many of your seats are, ge are getting filled up so that data you have to enter so this gives a very clear indicator about how good is your institution how good is the program offered by your institution how good it is at attracting students so better this percentage over here better is the marks that you score out of this 20. once again in the nac uh, ssr itself they are, they are giving you very clearly that how much marks you can score depending upon this percentage say for example if your percentage is 50 percent then you score so many some say 10 marks out of 20 if your percentage is 60 you score 12 marks out of 20 if your percentage is 80 and above then you can score 20 out of 20 like that they have specified so again it is a quantitative matrix and here for the for this quantity number that you are entering please remember that NAC will be asking you for the complete details of each and every student that you have admitted The next question is the category of the student, uh, the community category, uh, whether they are they come under the specially challenged quota like that. So here again, for the last five academic years, uh, number of students admitted. So please remember, it is only the first year data that you are going to give over here. Uh, in this academic year, first year, how many uh, have joined? In the previous year first year how many joined like that for the last five years you will be giving and once again the data template which we have already downloaded from the NAC website uh, that would be used for entering this data and uh, this data can be for the departments this data can be obtained from the office in fact once you are maintaining your uh, proctor card or your mentor card in your mentoring system the mentors will be having the profile of each and every student so from that itself they can fill up this data and they have to cross verify it with the admissions office or the central office in which the pool of data is being maintained and once again the formula is given over here and it is a quantitative matrix next subheading is 2.2 that is uh, how diversified is your student community so when we say diversification what we means is the quality of the students who are coming in so it says uh, for advanced learners for average learners and slow learners it is a qualitative matrix say for advanced learners if you are a university you may even provide a fast track program in which the student uh, can uh, study more number of subjects in one particular semester so that in the forthcoming semesters the uh, load is reduced and he can go for summer internship or he can even start applying for a job and start working say two days a week or three days a week so that the number of courses that he's taking uh, in the next semester is less that is for the advanced learners and for slow learners uh, once you have identified the slow learners what kind of steps are being taken by the institution say additional coaching classes whether you are providing uh, whether you are providing any important questions and answers from the examination point of view so that you are reducing the workload of the student or uh, after uh, college hours whether you are offering any um, additional coachings by the only for those uh, slow learners or whether you are providing them with any online content which you which they can go through at any time from the university from the college website institution website so these are the various schemes that would come under the advanced learners and slow learners once again it is qualitative and uh, in the file description uh, it is uh, given as not passing it is paste the link for any additional information once you give this then the dv may ask you for the list of slow learners and if you say that uh, in your description if you have given that uh, we are arranging coaching classes for the slow learners means then the NAC may ask you for the timetable for this coaching class. So that is how they verify it. It is a qualitative matrix. 
and uh, mr makesh raj is asking any criteria to uh, distinguish between advanced learners and solo sir there is no criteria specific criteria as teachers we know who are the advanced learners and solo learners which we would have identified based on their performance in the internal test that uh, internal assessment test that you have conducted and uh, the next question is Whether advanced learner is possible for AACT approved, sir? One uh, advanced learner, the example that was just an example that I gave. Yes, in AACT approved, uh, these things very much it is available because for advanced learners, in addition to the uh, courses that he is studying, you may also include some specific certification programs which the advanced learners can take up. Very much uh, possible even in AACT approved institutions. So the next question is two point two point two. It says. Uh, student faculty ratio sir i am getting too many questions and uh, my sincere request would be that uh, please save these questions for the last or let it be in the chat box i'll answer them uh, during the last session so the next question here is uh, student to full time teacher ratio so number of students who are in the institution <coughs> and the total number of students remember this data should be uh, should be tallying with the Data which you entered in the IIQA, and of course, as I told in the session one itself, minor variations because some minor variations are allowed. Where these minor variations will come is in case some teacher has left way or some student has uh, taken a TC and gone means then there may be a minor uh, uh, variation. Otherwise, the data should be matching perfectly. And one more thing, since they are asking for the latest completed academic year definitely there can't be any variation over here and next metric is student centric methods again it is a qualitative metric what is the, they are asking about uh, experiential learning participative learning and problem solving methodologies what are the courses in which these are being uh, followed you have to give a descriptive answer for that and you have to upload the supporting document for example participative learning means a project work or it can even be arranging of uh, conferences and seminars student projects uh, student uh, symposiums so these are part these are participative learning and the quiz which uh, for specific courses if the teacher is conducting course uh, quiz programs and based on their performance if uh, that is being considered for their internal assessments that is also uh, can be shown over here under 2.3.1 as it is qualitative <clears throat> only thing is that if you say that yes we are conducting quiz programs means then you have to include the link uh, supporting the supporting document saying which are the which one when was this quiz, quiz program conducted how many students participated and uh, uh, here since it is a descriptive answer there is no fixed template for this so the file that whether you are going to upload as a file or a link and the format of the file is purely based on the discretion of the institution because each institution may be following one format so there is no template for qualitative next one is teachers using ict enabled tool so info ict stands for information and communication technology so whether you are uh, using any powerpoint projection powerpoint slides you are using or uh, you are using any online so during this pandemic period almost all of us are uh, using webinars uh, someone is asking whether i can use a sample template definitely that will be given in the third session templates will be shared in the third session so uh, once you say that uh, the teachers are using ict enabled tools uh, you have to give the link in which say for example for a particular course say in bsc physics for uh, uh, nano materials for the course nano materials i say that i provide e content then uh, in the link if i click it should go directly to the page in which the e content for that uh, course nano materials is available <clears throat> next one is ratio of mentor to students for the academic and can we consider nptel lectures definitely you can consider nptel lectures very much it definitely comes under ict enabled tools and uh, coming to 2.3.3 ratio of mentor to students for the academic and other related issues 
and uh, formalize mentor to mentee. So for each mentor, for each staff, how many students have been allotted? So again, you have to hear it is remember it is quantitative means data number has to be specified. So you have to upload year wise number of students enrolled and full time teachers. Remember, this has to tally with the teachers list which you have provided earlier. And uh, you should also upload. The circulars because at the beginning of every semester or every year, the head of the department would have. <coughs> assigned and in some institutions, <coughs> the mentor does not change at all. <coughs> as soon as the student enters right from the first year to the third year in case of arts courses. <coughs> sorry, case of uh, engineering courses. Once they enter the department from the second year to the final year, the mentor does not change. So the circular which was given to the men assigning this mentor and mentee that should be uploaded. And the next key indicator is percentage of full time teachers against sanctioned post. So uh, in case there is any backlog, then it will be reflected over here. Uh, Udemy and private lectures acceptable. No Udemy and the private courses. Uh, they, are, they cannot be considered as certificate programs because for certificate programs, I told you minimum 30 contact hours for certificate programs. For online programs, if it is if it comes under NPTEL or SWAYAM, then it can be considered. <coughs> and the next one is. Uh, Number of full time teachers, if it's an arts college or an engineering college of uh, teachers with PhD in case of uh, medical colleges, then uh, <coughs> faculty with the qualification of DM, MCH, DNB, they are considered as uh, equivalent to PhD and they can also be included in this list and uh, doctorate of science and doctorate of uh, letters that is also being considered as equivalent to PhD and that has to be given and remember. It is a quantitative matrix and here how this will be verified by the DVV is once you give the number of year wise list of the. Teachers and you have to give the you are you will also be giving the names of these teachers, then the data validation and verification committee can ask for. The PhD copy of the PhD or DM MCH certificate of a particular staff. So out of say, for example, if you are having uh, um, 100, 100 PhDs in your institution, then out of those 100 names, the DVV can hand pick two or three or four names or five names, how many ever and ask for their certificates. So once you are entering the number over here, then you have to ensure that you have a copy of their certificates in the department. So that is two point uh, as far as 2.4.2 is concerned. Next is average teaching experience of full time teachers in the same institution. So for how long this is to uh, take up the retention ratio. So more number of teachers that you have, it means the institution uh, retention rate of the institution is very good, which means once this retention rate is good means the teachers are happy over there. So the uh, more number of experience that you can show here, the more number of marks you can score. Uh, how the uh, Professor Balaji is asking those who are doing PhD, can they be considered for this academy? No, sir, they cannot be considered. Once we say PhD means only those people who have been who have completed their PhD degrees and got their provisional certificates. So at the time of applying at the time of filling up and submitting the SSR, if you have completed, for example, if you have completed your viva was. But you have still not got your uh, degree means uh, you can include that name, but once the uh, DVV asks for that, then the viva completion certificate should be with you. Whereas if you are still the viva is not done for the PhD candidate at the time of submission means then he should not be counted in that category. And next one is. Mechanism of internal assessment is transparent and robust in terms of frequency and mode. 
so it is qualitative so when they say transparency what they ask is for internal assessment if you are conducting if you are awarding marks based on assignment then whether all the students are aware of the marks that has been allotted so that uh, there is no controversy saying now i also submitted the assignment i got only uh, seven marks whereas another person who has given uh, a poor assignment than me he got nine marks so that controversy should not be there which can be avoided only if there is transparency so that is what they are asking it is a qualitative matrix and additional information is you can upload samples of the assignments or you can give the link wherein it will take for the uh, assignment samples that have been submitted uh, also the mecha and robust meaning whether it is being followed strictly so say for example in internal assessment if i say out of the 25 marks 10 marks will be considered for the internal assessment one means then in the link uh, i have to enter the ma mark list of the students so internal assessment test mark uh, test one mark list has to be uploaded that is what is that link for additional information uh, next one is again qualitative mechanism to deal with internal examination related grievances whether it is transparent time bound and efficient in case some student has come up with a grievance as i told you in the example which i had just given you in case uh, a student is saying that uh, in case a student is saying that uh, he is not happy with the assessment then what is the mechanism that is followed i think someone is having their mic on and with the okay please switch off your mics i'm getting an echo over here yeah thank you So in case uh, there's a, some student has come up with a grievance, then what is the methodology that is followed? So here you need to have a copy of the letter uh, for which he has raised the grievance. And in case if the grievance was found to be genuine and addressed, and if there was any revision of marks, then the revised mark list, a copy of that should be maintained. And in case if the grievance has been addressed and the student has, con has is now convinced that, no, no, the evaluation process was correct and uh, the grievance has been rectified in that manner, then uh, the record of the meeting in which the mentor or the subject teacher or the HOD who has addressed that problem, so that record should be added over here. Because definitely once a student meets his mentor, the mentor would be entering on his proctor card the date on which he met them and for which grievance. So that should be mentioned over there. That is the additional data which should be required over here. And it is qualitative only. So there is no template for this. And uh, again, the next two metrics are qualitative metrics, student performance and learning outcome. So teachers and students are aware of the stated program and uh, course outcomes of the programs. So describe the COs, so upload the CO of all the courses. So all uh, this, all the institutions would be having their syllabus book in which they have uh, mentioned the course objective, CO, PO, the mapping, everything you would have done. So you can give a description of that over there. And in the link, once they click on the link, it should directly go to that CO, PO mapping. And uh, next one is attainment of POs and course outcomes are evaluated. Uh, once again, here in this link, 
once again uh, in this link you can uh, paste the link so that it lands directly on the page which shows for every department course wise attainment of this copo matrix and as i told you the copo mapping may not be applicable for some courses some programs so in which case uh, for whichever it is applicable only that we are going to mention over here and the next question is average pass percentage of the students for the past 5 years so number of students appeared while number of uh, total number of final year students who passed the university examination so here if i am going to apply for, for nac in this academic year then it means for the last five academic years so as you can see there the question is final year students who passed meaning if i am applying uh, in the month of say september 20 2020 2021 this academic year means the previous five academic years data i am going to enter over here and uh, here since it is a quantitative matrix the number has to be entered as per the data template so in the data template it will very clearly mention the program code because this program code will be given there in your syllabus book or so the program code name of the program say for example if it is an uh, mbbs program mbbs the program code the name of the program number of final year students who appeared for that out of that how many passed and the pass percentage and the five years data will be taken cumulatively and an average of this would be calculated upload the list of programs and the number of uh, that's the data that is the data template uh one question that they are asking is for each year both main and additional batches if it is a final year if in the case of additional batches if they have appeared for that final year examination it should definitely be considered because they are also final year students co and po application for affiliated institutions sir for co and po for affiliated institutions it would be given in your core and your uh, syllabus book itself they would have given you the co and pos and uh, as the institution you should uh, give the data of the percentage of achievement of this co po mapping now moving on to the next key indicator it is the student satisfaction survey again uh, here for this you have to give the data of each and every student of the institution to nac as i told you at the beginning itself during the first session you have to include the aadhar card number of the student so that the main reason for nac collecting these details is that they would be sending emails to all these present students remember it is the currently enrolled students it is that the data of the students who are inside the campus in this academic year in which you are applying so when we say student it means students inside my campus at the time of applying anybody before that is an alumni so when i say a final year student it means if i am applying in uh, say uh, august or september a final year student means a final year student who is in this campus in the year 2020 2021 so before him that final year he is called as an alumni so let us be very clear on that so you have to give the data of all the students currently in your campus in that academic year so that nac will be sending emails to them and taking the surveys from them so once again this is a quantitative matrix for which you will be uploading the database of all the currently enrolled student since it is a quantitative matrix it will be as per the data template coming to criteria on 3 it is for uh, research facilities that are available how much fund you how much what are the facilities available how much fund you are able to generate what is the research outcome in the form of publications seminars conferences patents so what is the uh, revenue that has been generated through consultancy projects through uh, royalties this is what we are going to see in this criteria and uh, 
two of these key indicators are not applicable to affiliated colleges. That is, consultancy and uh, research facilities are not applicable to affiliated colleges. Whereas for autonomous institutions and universities, all the seven are applicable. So the first key indicator in this it is that they are asking you for the grants received from government and non-governmental agencies for research projects. So here, year-wise data you have to give for the last five years. And since it is a quantitative metrics, there is a data template which I'll be sharing with you. So the data has to be entered in that template, which includes name of the project, who is the PI, co-PI, what are the department there, when was this project awarded, and if it is a government organization, say from uh, DST, D, uh, DBT, or ICMR, from wherever you have got the funds. So that sanction letter should be scanned and uploaded. And if this has been got from a non-governmental, a private agency, then the covering letter with which they would have transferred the funds. If they had issued a check, they would have definitely sent that along with the covering letter. Or if they have made an online transfer, then also they would have at least sent you an email saying that they are making an online transfer. In such case where you have only an email stating that it is an online transfer, then for supporting that, you need at least two documents. One is the email saying that they are transferring the amount. And the next one is the bank transaction page, either a printout of the passbook or a printout from the head banking page showing that this much amount has been received in the college account from that particular company or non-governmental agency. These are the documents that would be required for proof for ver verification from the DB. Remember, it is a quantitative metrics. So uh, the amount that you enter over here will also be verified in your audit statement of the institution. So here again, uh, when we say research funds, okay, uh, people who have already got the research funds, uh, definitely if it is from a governmental agency, uh, almost all the government governmental agencies specify that a separate account has to be opened for this purpose. So in that case, that's not a problem at all. And in case if you are already receiving funds from non-governmental agencies, and in case you don't have a separate account for that, at least from now on, it is recommended that you maintain an exclusive account. In fact, uh, exclusive account for each project. If the amount is substantial, say it goes in the in terms of like, say if it's a three years project, then it is uh, recommended that separate account be maintained for separate projects so that there is no confusion. And remember, these will be verified with your audit statement of the institution. And here, uh, Mr. Makesh Raj is asking, both student and staff project is acceptable. Yes, it is definitely acceptable as far as the fund has been obtained from an outside agency. So here next is percentage of departments having research projects. So uh, this will be tallying with the data which you gave in the previous uh, key indicator. So here this is for comparing how many departments are there totally. Remember you would have given your number of departments in the IAQA itself. And then while you are entering the UGPG programs. So the number of programs which you specified over there should be tallying with the a total number of departments that you specify here in the denominator. So in case there is any discrepancy in that, then the DVV will definitely raise questions on this. So this is the information from the depart from the as the head of the institution, if the, they are going to provide this data or if there is a separate research cell in the uh, institution which is taking care of this, then this should ensure that the total number of departments which you are specifying in this denominator is tallying with the total number of departments which you mentioned in the IAQA. So please remember that and it is a quantitative metrics meaning there is a fixed template the format in which the data has to be provided. 
and next one is again number of seminars conferences workshops conducted it is a quantitative matrix and here uh, they are asking for the total number of seminars conferences they have not uh, differentiated as uh, national state international so you can include everything in this so specify the academic year and in that academic year how many numbers you have organized okay and that would be as per the data template and once you enter uh, see uh, in the data template they will be asking you for the number of participants so in case if you claim that uh, you have given tada for the participants then the dvv may very well ask for the the dvv will definitely ask for the um, proof of payment for a particular participant so if you are saying that uh, tada is given for uh, workshops and conferences organized by you then please ensure that you have sufficient back document like at least a payment voucher if you are going to give a pay if you are going to give a payment voucher then please remember that this voucher date the amount that has been given here should reflect in your bank statement or in your audit statement so simply a payment voucher alone will not be sufficient a voucher should be substantiated by a copy scanned copy of the passbook in case if it's an online payment or in case if it is a cash payment then it should be reflected in the cash register of the accounts department which would once again be reflected in the audit statement next one is number of papers published per teacher in the journals notified on the ugc website so you have to enter the exact uh, numbers over here uh, here this will be verified by the dvv from the outside sources so here they will not be asking us any proof so ensure please ensure that whatever be the number you are entering over here uh, year wise then you have to be sure that once it is verified by the dvv it is reflected on the website website of ugc so if i say in this year 2000 uh, in the just concluded year 2019 20 if i say i have uh, 50 papers in ugc recognized journals then i should be having as given in the data template title of the paper name of the authors in which department they are in which journal it was published and the issn number now here one common doubt that we may have is sir we are entering the data for the last 5 years a situation may arise so that a journal which was there in the last year might not be here now let us not worry about that as long as the journal was there in the ugc website at the time of publishing during that academic year if it was there it is fine because in that journal website itself they would have specified that uh, this has been uh, included in the ugc website as well as the ugc website they would have mentioned that at that time this journal is there so uh, no worries about that at the time of publication whether that journal was there in the UGC recognized list. Uh, next is number of books and chapters published in national international conferences. Here again, uh, we can include only those chapters or those books of which the author was a teacher of the institution at the time of publication. What we mean here is that in case a, a staff has joined us only in the last academic year, and he has published uh, books or chapters uh, previous to joining here, then it cannot be included here. So only that uh, publication of which at the time of publication, if the teacher was in that particular institution only, it will be counted over here. So again, it is a quantitative matrix, which means that it is as per the data template given by given in the NAC website. And only those chapters and books which have ISBN, ISSN numbers would be considered. Next is the extension activities. That is a corporate, what we call as community or social responsibility activities carried out by the institution 
So the first one is uh, related to social issues. Activities carried out for the holistic development of the student. I remember it is a qualitative metrics. That is, uh, in case of, say for example, as members, as students, as members of the National Service Scheme or National Cadet Corps or Youth Red Cross or any other agency, whether it be governmental or non-governmental. In many cases, in some cases, the institutions may also have separate clubs. Say for example, Science Club, Nature Club, like that. They may be having. If they are having that, then they can include that in the descriptive answers and the link uh, which you will be giving here is that you can include the photographs of the act taken during the activities that has been carried out by these clubs with clearly mentioning what was the activity along with the name of the club and the date so if you can paste that link uh, the link over here and if the NAC committee clicks on that link then it should take them directly to the photograph Oh, say, for example, I am saying uh, an NSS activity. If I click on the link, it should take me over there. Institution says NSS activity has it to be registered. Definitely NSS means you would have got the approval from the corresponding state NSS unit. Only then it is considered as an NSS unit. Because uh, in some cases, the government also gives funds. Whereas in some cases, it will be a self-funding. So whatever be that, that NSS should be recognized by the corresponding state NSS unit. Same thing applies to NCC. So as I, I mean, continuing again, once I click on the link, it should take me to that corresponding activity. Clearly, with the photograph indicating the activity along with the date. 3.3.2 uh, is quantitative in which it says number of awards and recognitions received for these activities from government and government recognized bodies. So uh, it is a quantitative matrix in which you have to give the number of awards for the extension activities in the last five years. And uh, remember, it is quantitative. So it is a data template in which you have to mention the name of the award, the purpose or the activity for which the award was given and the agency which gave this award and uh, during which time, the year in which the award was granted. And uh, most of the times the award will be given along with the recognition certificate. You need to upload the e-copy of the award or in case there is no uh, certificate given, only a shield or something like that is presented, then a photograph of the shield. And along with that, a copy of the invitation letter or the letter which says that uh, the award has been bestowed on you. Now the question asks is how do we know that the agency is government recognized or not? Sir, very simple, sir. In the letter which you would have received itself, they would have mentioned recognized by government wide such and such numbers like that they would have given. Because most of the times what happens is we will be giving many awards over here, some uh, very good numbers but the DVB may summarily reject it, saying that these, the award which you received from such and such uh, organization, it is not recognized by the government. Hence, the number would be reduced. So please ensure that it is a government recognized. I am saying recognized, not registered, because many agencies give away awards and they would be a registered trust or a society that does not mean that they are recognized by the government let us understand the difference between the two they are registered societies it does not mean that all registered societies are government recognized no it is not so if college directly do some extension program it definitely can be considered how will the call i mean uh, but the staff or the student should be involved in that then i mean in, uh, then only it can be considered as an extension program done by the institution if it is being carried out by the trust which is sponsoring the institution then it will not be considered over here it can be considered as an extension activity of the institution only if there is a contribution of the student or the staff in that particular activity the number of extension programs organized through the NSS, NCC, Red Cross, all that. So here again, 
it is a quantitative matrix which means there is a data template which will include uh, the agency with which you have collaborated and in in case there is no collaboration then no problem at all in case only the ncc is involved directly in that only the ncc involved means absolutely no problem in the uh, column number name of the collaborating agency you can say in nil so be specific about uh, what is the uh, activity carried out and uh, since it is a quantitative matrix you need to have supporting documents for this like most of the time it is a photograph at that particular period and uh, supporting documents can be say for example you had carried out a campus cleaning activity in some remote village say you cleaned the temple premises or a school premises a government school premises or you sponsor the children sponsored a water tank or the children the students uh, took uh, classes for the government students uh, sports to computer classes computer awareness programs something like that they have organized means then you need to have photographs of these activities also you would have taken the students the institutes uh, college students over there meaning which at that time yeah, you would have used the college transport facility you would have stayed over there you would have spent for the food and uh, supporting documents uh, on the voucher that you have spent the money for this food uh, for the transport all these are the documents which are proof that this has been run and average percentage of uh, students particip participating in the extension activity here again number of students in nsls ncc all this data should be given remember it's a quantitative matrix and it should be as per the data template next one is about the collaborations and linkages <clears throat> for faculty exchange student exchange internship fieldship here it is a quantitative matrix and please remember that mous are different and this is different <clears throat> here say for example on the job training you may have a tie up with a, another private organization or even a government organization in which you do not you do not have a mou but there is email correspondence saying that they are ready to they are willing to provide the job training and they had in, in fact and they had also issued completion training completion certificates to the students means then that is very much valid and that can be included here here you have to be very clear about under what category that particular activity falls so the various categories that they have given are uh, faculty exchange student exchange internship fieldship field trip on the job training research so these are various heads. in case you have any other heads also that can be included only thing is that you if you say you have a tie up with another university or another institution for faculty exchange then that would be considered as one and uh, under the same uh, with the same institution under the same linkage if you are sending student also then you can consider that as two numbers one for faculty exchange and one for student exchange so in the title of the linkage you will be specifying <coughs> faculty exchange and the next one will be student exchange although in the partnering institution the name would be same so number of linkages would be increase for the under the same organization if it comes under various sets then you can count them separately if you have mou and student exchange has been done you can definitely consider it over here now why i said that they are different and this is different this you can consider those mous under 3.4.2 here it says number of functional mous with national and international institutions universities industries corporate houses in case the mou that you have with an industry which does not fall under this category then show it under the 3.4.1 only thing is that please don't repeat the same data in 3.4.1 and 3.4.2 because once we say a mou it means a signed document signed by both parties only that is called as 
MOU. And one more thing, they are very clear. They are asking for you. They are asking for the functional MOU. Meaning, once the MOU in the MOU itself format itself, if you, if you see, you would have specified what are the activities that could be carried out. And a functional MOU means at least one activity under that heading should have been carried out. Then only they call it as a functional MOU. So it is again quantitative, which means there is a data template asking you for the name of the other institution with which you have collaborated. When was the MOU signed? The year and how long is the MOU valid? Whether it is renewable every year or renewable after three years or five years? What is the duration? And the activities which had been carried out under that MOU. Now, under the same MOU, you can have three or four activities also. For example, faculty exchange, student exchange, research scholar exchange. Like this, many activities can happen under one MOU. And the file that needs to be uploaded is the entire MOU has be should be scanned and uploaded. Or you can even provide a link. If you are having more than one MOU, say 10 or 20 MOUs, then you can give a link. And once they click the link, it should go to the main MOU page in which you can have a pull down menu saying showing all the MOUs for the uh, MOUs made with the various universities. So that brings us to criteria number four. <laughs> criteria number four is about the physical infrastructure. So whether the institution has adequate infrastructure, so the number of classrooms, laboratories, all this you would be entering over here number of smart classrooms you have and in the classrooms also the number in case you have a separate uh, studio for uh, conducting this webinars or you have a edusat room that also can be included in this qualitative metrics and in the link you can include photographs for the as well as these various things And uh, the next one is again adequate, sorry, adequate facilities for sports, games, gymnasium. It is a qualitative answer. And uh, here you have to include as, as the supporting documents, you have to include the photographs. And remember, once you are including photographs of the facilities, then NAC will be asking you to do geo tagging. So while taking the photographs itself in the digital camera, you have to uh, put the keep the settings in such a way that once the photograph is taken, the latitude and longitude, the geo tagging is very clearly seen on the digital version of the photographs. So if you are taking photographs of your uh, laboratory facilities, classroom facilities, names and make sure that they are geo tagged. Then percentage of classrooms and seminar halls with. If the sports complex is shared, you can between the medical and dental colleges. Absolutely no problem. Only thing is geo tagging is required. Because anyway, once you say medical college and dental college, that sports facility is going to be in the uh, we call uh, in the land that belongs to either the medical college or the dental college. If it belongs to only to the medical college, then when you are going for NAC accreditation of medical college, you can say it is your own. Whereas if you are going for a dental college accreditation, you can say that you are sharing the facility with the medical college. That is not a trouble at all. Because NAC does allow sharing of some facilities. Whereas sharing of, I mean, uh, some facilities should be exclusive. So here you have to enter the number of classroom seminar halls. Again, it is quantitative, meaning there is a data template in which you have to enter these. And remember, uh, NAC would be asking in case you say that uh, you have five smart classrooms or 10 smart classrooms. Uh, if you uh, specifically specify those numbers, then they may ask for the geo tagged photographs of those. The sharing of lab facilities between institutions is not permitted. And in case if it is, if you say it is permitted, then you have to uh, give the supporting document for the permission as accorded by the corresponding regulatory authority under which uh, authority you have been permitted to share that facility that should be specified. Here one question that is, is this geotagging is required. Geotagging requirement is only for photos. 
definitely for infrastructure whenever you are taking a photograph geotagging will definitely be required because you are going to anyway take the photograph from now on only so geotagging would be required so next is coming to the budget part uh, average expenditure excluding salary so salary criteria should not be included over here and here once you say that this much amount of uh, money has been spent then if you say for example last year they had sp we have to spend uh, 120 lakhs that is 1.2 crores 120 lakhs then this 120 lakhs in what are the avenues in which in it was spent because they are very clearly asking infrastructure augmentation say whether any new buildings have been built whether any sports complex has been built any transport bus has been bought any additional facilities like this so whatever be the amount that is specified over here should be substantiated with the checks or online payments that has been made for that total amount Good. now coming to the library as a <clears throat> learning resource first one is qualitative metrics which means uh, you will be uploading the photograph of your library with geotagging you will be specifying the software which you are using and also the purchase bills for that particular software which you had paid and uh, 4.2.2 is quantitative that is uh, the institution has subscription e journals shod sindhu so if you ask, if you say any four or more then you have to have uh, for e journals the subscription letter which they had mailed you same thing with shod sindhu so one thing that we have to uh, remember here is they are very clearly specifying <coughs> e-journals and e-books separately in many cases previously and all if you remember when we purchase a textbook or reference books for the library uh, previously when the debt and the dvd was very popular at the end of the book the entire book would be given in a pdf format written in a dvd or a cd now that should not be entered here let us be very clear ebooks are different and a dvd containing a soft copy of a textbook is different so while you are entering the data be clear about your understanding of the term ebooks let me repeat ebooks are different and a, a, a dvd containing a soft copy of a book is different so once you enter the data it's a quantitative matrix then you have to upload the subscriptions that you have made for e-journals Shodganga membership letter and Shod Sindhu membership letter. Next is the expenses made exclusively for procuring books and e-books for the library. So here every year you have to mention that and this has to be substantive. Say for example, uh, in INR for one academic year in INR I am mentioning 25 lakhs for library then this 25 lakhs I have to give a split up of how this 25 lakhs was spent how much was given for ebooks say for example out of the 25 lakhs I am saying 16 lakhs was given for ebooks means then this 16 lakhs what are the various companies to which the 16 lakhs was given the split up of the, the, the split up of this 16 lakhs should be given very clearly which should be substantially supported in your audit report next is percentage per day usage of library by teachers and students footfalls and login data for online access so this many of the colleges uh, have automated i mean uh, barcoded id cards so that the student when he enters the library he scans his id card which records his attendance of entering into the library so once you enter the number over here it should be substantiated with that attendance record in case if it is automatic or uh, in, if you don't have an automated attendance wherein the student are entering their names while they are entering the library in the register then scanned copies of that registers would be required by the NAC office And if the students are accessing the library, if the institution is providing e-access, then the login details of the students should be produced.
Next is the IT facility and how the, this information technology facility is constantly upgraded by the institution. Here it says whether the campus has Wi-Fi. In case you have Wi-Fi, then the bill that invoice submitted by the I mean, invoice given by the Wi-Fi service provider, internet service provider, ESP to the institution must be uploaded. And next one is the student to computer ratio. Here, when uh, one important thing that we have to remember is, remember in your uh, extended profile, we included the number of computers. So when we are saying student to computer ratio, we should not include the computers that are available in the office or the account section for administrative purposes. They are different. And once we say a student to computer ratio, this includes computers to which students have access. And uh, next one is bandwidth of internet connection. Remember, it is quantitative, which means once you enter some number A, B, C, D, or E, then you have to provide the letter as a proof. And one more thing, when the peer team is coming for the inspection, they may physically check whether the internet strength at that time is tallying with the data that you are giving over here. Next is expenditures incurred on maintenance of infrastructure facilities. That is, uh, any painting activity was carried out. Any transportation materials, uh, tra transport uh, buses were uh, taken for service. So all that will come under the expenditures incurred on maintenance. Please remember that this is only for maintenance of the infrastructure and not for uh, new buildings that has been built. Here, uh, the department can't have much. I mean, the department should also have a, a record of all this numbers because what is given over here is the overall total budget that has been spent out of which, uh, say, for example, in one year, if, the, if you are giving an amount of 10 lakhs, then this 10 lakhs, what are how this 10 lakhs was spent? What are the buildings that were painted or repaired? Like that, we have to be very clearly specify that split up and the corresponding department should also know that okay their building was painted at this time and this much amount of money was spent on that and remember it is a quantitative matrix which means a data template is there and very obviously since it is financial concerned this amount should be reflected in your audit statement and next one is a qualitative answer in which case they say whether they are established systems and procedures for maintaining and utilizing the physical facilities that is laboratory usage and uh, wow, as the student enters the laboratory are they swiping their id cards for barcoded entry or whether you maintain any separate attendance or in case if it's a regular time uh, regular course activity then the timetable should uh, clearly specify whether the students are there uh, they are asking sports day expenses or research expenses research expenses will come in three and not in four so this completes the criterion four and we move on to criterion five where the key indicators are student support student progression student participation activities and alumni engagement so first one is number of students benefited by scholarship and free ships provided only by the governmental agency so you have to include in case the student is being sponsored by any private agency it should not be shown over here because this 5.1.1 is exclusively for government so include that number as per the data template and you should be having the letter received from the government along with the release of funds for, the, for every year and the next one is for the non-governmental agencies if the student has been sponsored by a private trust or society or the institution itself is giving some free seats without collect or uh, a part payment fees to the students, then that number can be included over here. And uh, this is again a quantitative matrix, which means that if we say that uh, private agencies are involved in this, then we have to mention 
the name of the scheme under which the students are being benefited because NAC may verify it with that sponsoring agency. So you also need to have the letters given by that sponsoring agency. Yes, fee concession given by the student can definitely be added in this. Only thing is there has to be a letter which has been officially issued to the student saying that his, uh, he has been awarded a fees concession. And this is regarding to the training that has been offered to the student. Additional training outside the curriculum, outside the courses. Uh, one more question that they're asking is, can it be a consolidated? You cannot have a consolidated letter for all the students. It has, it can only be individual letters. Because if it is a consolidated letter, then there they can't specify how much money can has been, how much concession has been given for which student. So 5.1.3 capacity building and initiatives taken by the for soft skills. Here again, it is a quantitative matrix, which means as per the data template, you have to be clearly specify the name of the program conducted, number of students who have enrolled of them on that program, the name of the agency, and also sample copies of the certificates issued. Next is <clears throat> average percentage of student benefited from the guidance for competitive examinations. So, can this training be done by internal faculty with e certificate? Definitely, but uh, this should have been done outside your working hours in which the timetable has not been disturbed. That is the answer for that question from uh, Dr. Reena. So, uh, regarding this uh, competitive examinations, say GRE, TOEFL, and for PG, NEET, all these, uh, how many students have appeared and any guidance was given or if the institution itself has some in-house training because for example in some institutions for the from the third year itself in the case of engineering the department organizes courses in gre or for gate preparation so that data can be entered over here and in case if it is being done by an out by collaborating with an outside agency that can very well be included over here and you have to have the MOU that you entered with that agency as the backup document. And this is regarding the student grievance. Uh, here, if you say that uh, you have all the three, that is uh, grievance mechanism is there, the grievance has been addressed means, then you need to have a copy of the letter which in which the students has uh, expresses grievance or in case if you have a standard format which says name of the student uh, department in which he is studying the name of the uh, program is pursuing and nature of grievance like that if you have a standard format then a copy of that should be enclosed and then once a grievance is received what was the action taken on that so that should also be included in this or you can say well i have a grievance redressal mechanism but fortunately there has not been any complaint like that you can also see if that is the case next is percentage of placement so this data will be taken care should be cross verified both by the department and the placement cell of the institution so here once you once you specify the number of outgoing students then you need to have individual placement record for each and every student the appointment order of the student company wise should be maintained for each and every individual student. Then student who have gone for higher education. A medical institute, you do not have a placement cell. Absolutely no trouble, madam. Once uh, the department, if they are having the copy, that is fine. If the student has uh, joined in any hospital through the college, then that can be included in this placement. Or the student is going for private practice, no problem. The number of outgoing student progression to higher education here ug to pg pg to mphil pg to phd mphil to phd once you enter these numbers in the data template 
once the, you enter the data uh, students numbers in this data template then you have to have the proof of their migrating from ug to pg the supporting document should be there the letter of admissions that they have got so one question that they are asking is what is the proof that you can have for starting a clinic once you are starting a clinic i am very sure that it should be registered with some state regulatory authority so that and that letter which they are having which they have received the clinic that should uh, rena shyam i'm madam i'm not sure uh, how to track this information which information i'm not sure if you can be specific so this is regarding the students who are progressing to higher education then uh, students qualifying in national gate gre toefl so how many students have appeared and how many have cleared if the student has cleared those examinations then you need to have his pass certificate in that particular examination as the proof so gre his score mark sheet which specifies the scores he has, uh, he has scored in that gre a copy of that mark sheet is required same thing applies for toefl civil services and uh, upsc all these things so once we give a number over here then that many number of letters or mark sheets are mandatory because once these numbers are not tallying say for example you are giving 20 students over here and you have only five uh, letters or supporting certificates mark sheets then the dvv will reduce the number to five so when you are giving these numbers please ensure that the corresponding supporting document is there and the next key indicator is student participation and activities about sports and culturals and uh, university level national level uh, always remember if you say that uh, x number of students have achieved uh, have won state competition international or national competition then you need to have separate scanned copies of each and every student certificate then only this number will be accepted by the dvv otherwise if the number that you enter here and the number of certificates that is scanned and uploaded in your website if this number is not tallying then the dvv will reduce the number based on the number of scanned copies of certificates same way national and international means whether it is really a recognized national event or an international event only that should be included so uh, when you are entering the data please be sure that the data whether it comes under university level or state level or national level and uh, institutional facilities it is qualitative <coughs> and once again here if you are putting any photographs put geotag photographs and the next one is number of sports and cultural events <coughs> You can enter the exact number over here, and since it is quantitative, remember it has to be entered in the <coughs> data template. And next one is the alumni association. Whether you have an alumni association, whether it is registered. If it is a registered association, then a copy of the registration certificate would be required. And uh, here, if you have a uh, the alumni the uh, information that you can upload is a tabular column indicating the date in which the various the date in uh, indicating the date in which the alumni meet was held and also that, that will be one document and the next would be a series of photographs that were taken during the various alumni meets so when you upload the photographs for each and every photograph please specify the date on which the alumni meet was arranged next is the alumni contribution whether any alumni uh, has whether individually any alumni has contributed any amount of money or whether a batch uh, say for example uh, the a batch of students uh, say 95 passed out batch or 96 passed out batch whether they have contributed uh, in the form of money or whether they have contributed in the form of say uh, infrastructure equipments computers or uh, research equipments or uh, they would have even built a separate block like that if some active if any activity has taken place please mention that activity and also please ensure that this amount whichever you are saying what has come from the alumni 
you have to show the source of fund indicating the alumni name from which if it is an individual contribution you with uh, the uh, six or if it is a collective contribution this has to be reflected in your audit statement so the key indicators in criterion six are the institutional vision and leadership strategy development and deployment faculty empowerment finance and iq yes internal quality assurance system so the first uh, key point indicator under this criteria on six is institutional vision and leadership so uh, as far as criteria six and seven are concerned most of the metrics are qualitative so the first question is <clears throat> about the governance of the ins institution whether it is reflective of and in tune with the vision and mission of the statement so here you need to right, give a descriptive answer and also give a link which will take take us to the vision mission of the statement which is our vision mission of the institution in our website and the next question is whether the effective leadership is visible in various institutional practices such as decentralization and participative management so when they say decentralization what they mean is whether every uh, whether the power has been distributed at every level like for example from the board of management the academic council the board of studies the head of the institution from him to the administrative side the heads of the department or the uh, deans of the schools then the heads of the departments then the faculties whether whether the power distribution has been given like this that is what they mean by decentralization for example as even for uh, as far as financial matters are concerned there should be some financial freedom and limit up to which the hod can be authorized to carry out some financial implications like say for example up to 5000 rupees or up to 10000 rupees or even up to 1000 rupees the hod can need not take any permission from anybody and he can very well spend the department funds and then settle the accounts at the end of every month like that if some freedom is given then it comes under decentralization and participative management it is the percentage of representation from the staff members on the important decision making committees of the institution like say for example the number of faculties who are represented in the board of management in the academic council this is a typical example of participative management so in the, that is the description that we will be giving in the qualitative metrics and for the file description when you are uploading the information the information the information that you would be uploading is for participative management you can include the members list of the board of studies or the academic council in which you can pinpoint the names of the staff members who are being represented the next one is whether the institutional strategic plan is effectively deployed here again we you need to have a strategic plan document like for example what is expected is every 3 years once or every 5 years once an institution is expected to project to prepare a document showing a road map for the next 3 to 5 years and where they see themselves at the end of 5 years and how to achieve that target that is the strategic plan and every 6 months once or every 1 year once this strategic plan would be reviewed and it would be measured whether the target that have been fixed at the end of the 6 months or 1 year has been achieved that is referred to as the deployment document so this strategic plan and deployment document should be uploaded on the institution website and the link to this should be given in this criteria and the next question is the functioning of the institutional bodies is effective and efficient as visible from policies administrative setup appointment and services here if you remember when we were submitting the iiqa there was the last the last question that was asked in that was whether the institution has committees like uh, women empowerment minority cell faculty grievance redressal cell like this we had some six or seven committees and they had asked us to check whether we have those committees so that thing would be reflected here in this 6.2.2 so once you have these institutional bodies then the link that you will be giving over here yes the list the setup of that members list of that particular committee 
and appointment orders that had been issued by to the members appointing them as members of that committee and then the book that shows the procedure and the rules and regulations that govern the functioning of that committee next is implementation of e governance on areas of operation that is whether the administration the finance section all these are being automated and computerized so that there is minimum usage of paper use and movement of files across departments and everything is being e managed so it's a quantitative matrix if you say yes we have all of the above all the four means then you have to specifically show it's a quantitative matrix and in the data template you will be giving the details of for administration what is the software you are using for finance and accounts same way for examination and student admission and then you should also specify the name of the purchase vendor from which it was purchased and also the invoices showing the proof of purchase and while uploading the link you will be as given over here the document because every erp would be having a preface document a screenshot of that and then the various screen the screenshots of various pages that appear in that erp that should be upload that should be scanned and uploaded next is faculty empowerment strategies it is a qualitative matrix wherein the institution has to give a description of the various welfare measures like earn leave sick leave leave reimbursement uh, whether the institution is sponsoring the faculty for higher studies whether sabbatical leave is uh, provided uh, whether the institution supports the faculties for attending national international conferences whether the institution is supporting them to bring out their research findings in the form of paper publications or financial help for patent filing all these come under the institute uh, welfare measures for teaching staff and these are the welfare measures as far as the research is uh, and administrative setup is concerned also in many institutions the institutions provide them uh, housing loan personal loans even marriage loans at very nominal interest rates or in, in some cases even interest free loans have been given so the documents for that would be required as backup documents for 6.3.1 so once we say that these welfare measures are available then these should be reflected in the website of the institution so when nac visits the website of the institution on that under staff welfare schemes it has to be mentioned to what are the various welfare schemes that are available in that particular institution the next one is the extension of the previous welfare scheme that was discussed so here they are asking you the proof of that that is the number of teachers who have been provided with financial support to attend the conferences workshops and in case they have become uh, members of professional bodies like ieee ime like that then whether the institution is paying the membership fees for them so here it's a quantitative matrix which means a standard template is available in which the data has to be entered and it includes the name of the teacher and the name of the conference or workshop for which he attended now the supporting document for that would be the attendance certificate of the teacher the certificate which he would have got from that conference for attending that conference that is one proof and number 2 the tickets or the uh, the train tickets or the air tickets whether they were booked by the teacher or the institution in case if it has been booked by the institution then the booking document from the travel agency of the institution would be sufficient or in case if the teacher has booked it by himself then how that money was reimbursed to him the proof for that whether it was paid by cash by means of a voucher or whether it was transferred to the account of the teacher online or whether a check whether a check was signed and given that data should be uploaded and for uh, professional body professional body membership also if the membership fee was provided the same documents whether by cash reimbursement or check or online payment that should be uploaded next is average number of professional development and administrative administrative training programs for teaching and non teaching staff 
so for teaching staff whether any orientation programs or faculty development programs uh, it can be either in house programs that, that that has been organized or it can be programs organized by third parties inside the campus so that is uh, the, the data that has to be given over here and uh, the orientation program can be subject specific course specific or department specific for the faculties or it can also be general as to personal development and for administrative staff what are the training programs that have been organized this is again a quantitative matrix in which the data has to be entered and the data would include title of the program and when was it organized the from date and to date and also the names of the staff members who have attended that should be recorded the next question is average percentage of teachers undergoing faculty development programs and it can it, both online and face to face programs can be included in that it is again a quantitative matrix here this has to be supported by the certificates certificate of attendance of each and every staff who has attended those training programs like for example in uh, for one academic year if you are entering the number as uh, 65 then you should have 65 certificates supporting the claim that has been made over here next institutions performance appraisal system for teaching and non teaching so here many of the institutions implement academic grade pay so the promotions and the increments are based on the academic performance of the staff so at the end of every semester or, the, or at the end of every year many institutions collect a self appraisal from 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 the faculty asking them to give details about the uh, percentage of uh, students who have passed in their course about the research activities they have undertaken about the consultancy projects that they have carried out about the mentorship that they have given to the students and any other administrative uh, or academic responsibility that they do in addition to the teaching so all these data should be available in the appraisal form that is being submitted by the faculty this is the self appraisal form and in addition to this there can also be an appraisal form which is called as the acr the annual confidentiality report which is being submitted by the head of the department on the various staffs so next key point indicator yes management and resource mobilization so it's a first one is a qualitative matrix uh, whether you are carrying whether the institution is carrying out internal and external financial audits so this would be taken care by the office section so they will be enclosing copies of the audit reports for the last five financial years next is the funds and grants received from non-government bodies individuals during the last five years again this would be taken care by the finance department and in addition to this in case the department has received any funds from the non-government bodies individuals then that can also be included over here like as for uh, please remember that there is no repetition because uh, if you are uh, using the same the amount that you give here please be specific about whether it, it is included here as well as in the alumni section so if you have shown it only an alumni section and if that fund has been given by an individual as an alumni then don't include it here or if you can include it or if you are including it here then you have to specify that this includes alumni also when inquired by the dvv next is institutional strategies for mobilization of funds and and the optimal utilization of resources so this is a qualitative matrix that is how are the funds generated in addition to the tuition fees paid by the students this can be in the form of research grants for research and also in the form of revenue generated by means of consultancy projects by the staff members also by means of sharing of the physical resources or the research resources that are available in the institution so when the outside agencies or individuals make use of this 
infrastructural and research facilities of the institute and they pay the institute that can be shown under this head that is the mobilization of funds and in the second session someone was asking what about the sharing of resources that can be shown here in this description as optimal utilization of resources a typical example can be a central instrumentation facility available at one campus wherein if an institution has two or three three or four campuses then the central instrumentation facility available in one campus can be shared and utilized effectively by the various institutions the next on iqas internal quality assurance system is whether an iqac or any other body that controls and audits the quality assurance whether it is present in the institution and then you have to specify any two practices like say for example a regular academic and administrative audit is expected to be carried out by every institution that can be shown as one example and also any other practice that is generally done by the iqac as a part of its not only on the academic front but also on the holistic front can be included in this 6.5.1 matrix which is a descriptive metric the next one is the review of the tlp teaching learning process structures methodologies and operations so this entire thing is taken care by the internal quality assurance cell the next one is quality assurance initiatives of the institution so oh, i'm sorry yeah assurance initiatives of the institution this is a quantitative matrix whether the options that are shown over here have been done that is regular meeting of the quality assurance cell and next is collaborative quality initiatives participation in if and if you have additional iso or nba that can also be shown so depending upon the value which you chose if you say you are doing all the above then you need to give supporting documents for all the four like the meeting schedules minutes of the meetings of the iqac then for uh, nif what is your nif ranking the link of the mhrd website in which the institution the name of your institution uh, comes on directly on, on linking this sorry on clicking this link and uh, the iso certification if you have and the nbs certificates that should also be shown and one more point that is that the collab collaborative quality initiatives with other institutions in case if you are partnering with other institutions to carry out any uh, say for example academic and administrative audit if you are collaborating with any other university uh, university or institution to do a joint exercise then that can be brought here under collaborative quality initiatives so the supporting data if you are an already nac accredited institute then the first point is applicable to you that is the annual quality assurance report aqar which has been prepared and submitted coming to the last criteria that is criterion 7 the key indicators are institutional values and social responsibilities best practices and the distinctiveness of the institution these are the three key indicators so it is a qualitative matrix which asks us to elaborate on the measures initiated by the institution for the promotion of gender equity so gender sensitization programs if we have conducted we have to show about that and regarding the specific facilities they are asking us to provide the web link uh, safety and security counseling so in case you have counseling rooms and boys common room girls common room then geotag photographs of the same and uh, if the institution provides day care center for the children of the faculty then a geotag photograph of that should be included with regard to safety and security all the institutions are expected to have 24 by 7 security personnel going around the campus and also cctv then the institution has facilities for alternate source of energy yes so they have also given that solar energy bioglass plant uh, if your answer for that is going to be yes then for each category you have to have the establishment certificate like the solar energy plant who has established that 
and whether it is being functioning properly, whether the annual maintenance is being done properly and the maintenance certificates are filed. So those are the supporting documents which should be provided as far as this alternative source of energies are concerned. And uh, they, are, they, they are also asking for the geotag photographs. If you are showing a solar power plant, then a geotag photograph of the same is to be included. Sorry, one more. For example, another in point number four, we can say that uh, we can see that sensor based energy conservation. That is, uh, say, in some auditoriums or conference halls, once the conference hall is empty, once the last person leaves, then within the next two minutes, the entire system, all the uh, electricity consuming devices like lights, bulbs, fans, and air conditioning will shut down automatically. That is your sensor based energy conservation. In case you have any such infrastructure inside the campus, then a, ge then a geotag photograph of the same, and also the certificate or the bill or invoice uh, generated by that company who established that sensor-based energy conservation system in the institution, that has to be scanned and uploaded. Next is a qualitative matrix. Describe the facilities in the institution for the management of degradable and non-degradable waste. This is especially in the case of uh, medical colleges and dental colleges, health science institutions. So how they are disposing of the uh, waste. Also generally solid waste management. Here I have another question says, uh, okay, fine, it has gone. Action taken report mandatory for all the decisions taken by the IQSC. Here one thing that we have to understand is whenever a meeting is being conducted, Always the first point would be an agenda of the meeting and the next point would be the action taken the minutes of the meeting of the previous uh, minutes of minutes of the meeting of the previously completed meeting would be the first point and the next point would be the action taken report. So pretty obviously whenever it is a recurring meeting the action taken report is mandatory. I think I have answered your question uh, Professor Renuka Devi madam. So that is about the solid waste management, the license that they have procured for disposing of the waste and the e-waste management, how the institution is managing that in case all the electronics and the computer hardware related, if, they, if it is uh, given away as junk, how it is being properly disposed, that point should be elaborated here in the qualitative metrics. And uh, the next point is uh, water conservation facilities like rainwater harvesting, borewell, tanks, so for all of this, you will require geotagged photographs of the facilities. Then green campus initiatives, it's a quantitative matrix. So the number of check boxes that you check over here, the corresponding geotagged photographs of every box should be uploaded. And the next one is a quantitative matrix again, quality audits, green audit, energy audit, environment audit, and whether the institution has won any awards on clean and green campus. For example, AACT every year, it, uh, it awards the top 10 institutes in the country, top 10 partial institutes, AACT approved institutes in the country with a clean and green campus award. So the number the, uh, for every box that you check over here, you have to give the green audit. Once you check green audit and energy audit, the green audit report for the last five years, the energy audit report for the last five years, and the action taken report based on that should be uploaded. and whether the institution has a disabled friendly barrier free environment ramps lifts disabled friendly washrooms so here you will require the geotagged photographs and in case uh, if around the institution if you have any policy document that is being put over there that should be also included and one more thing that they have given us details of the software procured for providing the assistance that is in case Someone came with a question which I couldn't read now. Uh, Mr. Ravin, I'll come to that later. It has been, it's gone away from my screen. Ah, for example, uh, is there any assistive technology and facilities for persons with disabilities for accessing website and screen reading software? That is for uh, uh, persons with uh, vision impairment. 
whether uh, we have any facilities like that if there is any facility then that has to be uploaded over here on the next uh, metric which is again qualitative institutional efforts in providing an inclusive environment tolerance harmony towards cultural regional linguistic so if you conduct any uh, cultural program wherein all the students who come over there from various regional cultural and economical backgrounds where they mingle then the photographs taken at that time can be shown as the documentary evidence for answering this point number 7.1.8 and uh, regarding 7.1.9 about the programs that have been conducted for the students and employees sensitizing them on the values rights duties so whether the program was conducted in-house or in participating collaboration with any third party then the list of activities should be uh, written as a tabular column and uploaded and also any photographs that were taken at that time or any MOUs that were entered into the third parties for conducting the same that should be uploaded and uh, the code of conduct for students teachers and staffs whether it is displayed on the website most of the institutions have a service rule book for their employees also the curriculum book is issued to the students which all which also includes uh, the code of conduct that is expected of the student inside and outside the campus during his course of study and uh, if the institution organizes any regular annual awareness programs that should also be included and next is about celebrating national and international commemorative days for example uh, international yoga day was celebrated recently uh, online uh, this year and in the previous years it was conducted within the campus so that is a typical example of uh, national and international commemorative days also teachers day engineers day doctors day if the institute celebrates such days then that should be included over here and the next one is about the best practice this is the institution distinctiveness any two best practices successfully implemented by the institution as per nac format so if you remember at the beginning of the session itself in the morning we said that we have to download the manuals for the institute under which category we fall so in that NAC manual will be given the format for specifying the best practice so whatever be the two best practices that your institution follows that should be elaborated in the format in a descriptive answer for this mat for this metric so that format is what is the title of the practice what are the objectives context so it's given here in detail so the performance of the institutions in one area that is here you can indicate how you are better than your peers why your institution is more sought after than the competitors in and around your vicinity so that key point which attracts the student which gives the students an edge over their peers who are studying in other institutions it should be given over here in a descriptive manner now here there is no specific format for this only thing is this can be verified when the committee visits over here or if the dvv asks for some supportive document like uh, photographs or any proofs for this in any other form then that has to be provided there is no specific format for quality metric number 